All right, so we had gotten started in the Google Apps at this location, mail.google.com. I think you can go to drive.google.com if I remember right. Let's check that. If I go to my drive, or sorry, it's docs.google.com. Let's try it. Let's just go to docs.google.com and hit enter. And I think if I'm already logged in with with my email, yep, my little icon of my face will show up there. And now I can search, if I have multiple folders, I can search for CS101. And I have lots and lots of folders. And I should have a folder called CS101 somewhere here. Uh oh, it's giving me. I'm looking for my folder CS101. It's not giving me the nice view that I have when I go here from my Gmail. Let me let me go into my Gmail and find it better. I'm getting I have a better page there. So I'll go to mail.google.com and go to the array of activities. There's the drive. Slightly different view where I can see on the left my drive, my shared files, uh, some other files I keep up there. And now I can search my drive for CS101. There, there, I'm at drive.google.com. I, I guess I like the interface at drive.google.com. And there's my CS101 folder with all the years ever since 2010 been using these Google Docs. There is this course and where is the assignment? Or oh, is in that untitled document? Let's try this. This might be it. January 15th. Let's check it out. Yes, it is. There is the assignment. I better put at the top of this. I'm going to call this uh, Google Docs Docs Assignment. Get the spelling right. Bye, and then put your name there. Never hurts to put extra information to make it clear what this is and get things spelled right. The red squiggly show up. So far, I think last time, I think we got to publishing your document as a web page. And we did the file publish to web. We got to number six, and I think we had just kind of started on to uh, the actual sharing the document. Let's just review how you publish a document. Not there. Here. Remember the name? I can always click up there to change my name of the document. To publish it, remember we go under File, Publish to Web. If I zoom out a little bit, you'll see that published to web. And if it's already published, it'll show me. Oh, you already have a link to it. And remember, if I zoom out just a little bit more, control minus lets you zoom out a little bit. I'll zoom out just a little bit more so I can see that whole page. I can start or stop publishing there. I can check whether or not to automatically republish. I don't know why you wouldn't automatically republish if I make changes. So we've gotten that far now. And remember, if I publish it, then I have the link right there. I can copy, select that, Control-C copies it. And I can put the link anywhere in this document so I can verify that that link is working. And look at that long, ugly link. If I want something better than that, remember you can always select some text and then click the little chain and paste the link there then you'll have something that takes you to that long, ugly looking link with just some words that they just click on. It becomes a link to that document. Very handy, especially if you're sharing a large document. You don't have to attach it. And remember, if you're attaching it, you have now have another copy just to be confusing. Which copy is the one that's the good one? Well, when you just share the link, and, say, and that, what's cool about Google Docs, if someone else is looking at this link, they will appear up here, I believe, and will show as people viewing that link. So if I click there and view it. If anyone else is on this, viewing this, I, well, maybe it only does it for docs. I forget now. I know for docs it shows you whether someone else is looking at that link. So let's go to the next thing. We've shared it as a, or published it as a web page. And remember as a web page, it just looks like something that they cannot change. It shows a little link at the top or a little uh, message at the header that what's the name of the file is. And I think down at the bottom of it, it says published by Google Docs at the bottom of the page. Let me shrink this page down a little bit to see that. 
way down at the bottom of the page, it'll show. Or used to show. Huh. All right, let me grab the slider. There we go. It shows published by Google Drive. You can actually have your own personal website, but it's not going to be a very readable website. It's going to be this long link. We'll go create a site in a second. So back to this document. Notice I'm viewing it as a web page. Now I want to go back and view it as a Google Doc. And we want to share it as a Google Doc now. Yes? Oh, sure. So first thing I do, I go and do a publish to web. And I can then click on that link and do control C copy. And then I close that. And if I want to make any text a link to something, sure. So file, publish to web. And see you have that link up there in the publish to web. You just click on that link. And see how it got selected to turn dark. Control C will copy it to what we call the clipboard. Copy it into a temporary memory. Now I can close that. And now if I want to make a link to that anywhere, like here's the, I'll, I'll just uh, click some text here. Document as a web page. I select through the text and I can click the little chain and control V, paste that link. And then I click apply. And now I have a link to that document as a web page. Sometimes, because maybe people have it as a hard copy or don't have the link, but would like to see the full link, you can actually just control V, paste that entire ugly link. And once I hit a space after that, Google Docs says, oh, I see that's a link. I'll make it a live link. It automatically will uh, decorate it with a different color. And that's telling anyone that reads this that, hey, this, if I click on that, I can actually go visit the published page. But that's one way of sharing your document. That's a published web page. Now we want to share it as a Google Doc, where other people can actually view it. And you can actually give them edit privileges. And 100 people can be editing the same document together. We did that once in class, and it was a very interesting uh, experiment. We might try that sometime. To let you edit and see what different things will do when everyone's editing the same document. But in this case, we're, now that you have this document, we're going to share it. Oh, and you're learning to use Chrome now, right, Emmanuel? Yeah. yeah, Chrome behaves a little better here and there with Google Docs. Okay, so we're in our Google Docs. Go ahead and log back into your Google Docs. I'm in the doc. This time, it's a little more obvious. When I want to share it as a Google Doc, that's your upper right, share the document. Here now, when I click on it, this is sharing it not as a web page, but actually as a Google document. And rather than sharing, with, sharing it with a specific person, I'm going to click on the advanced button down there and change who has access. There's the link to share. But first, I want to make sure anyone who has that link can use it. So I'll click on change and make it, this is the easiest way, make it anyone with the link. If you want, you can make it public on the web, but at least make it anyone with the link. The thing about public on the web is someone decides to search for CS101 cloud assignment, <clears throat> they would, your, your document will actually show up in the search results. Sometimes you like that. Anyone with a link means it's not going to be showing up in Google's search engine, but all you have to do is give them the link to your document and they can come and view it. Notice down here, by default, anyone can view it. If you had a completely public document, you could say anyone publicly can edit that document. That would also be a very interesting experiment. And depending on who sees that link, you might get some interesting things showing up on your pages. So I do not do view unless, or do edit unless I'm sure I trust people and it's a document that's in case someone malicious gets it, I, it's not going to hurt me. So anyone with the link can view. And now I click save. There's the link. Looks just like any web page link. Let's copy that and click on done. Notice these other options that I haven't messed with, but you can actually keep people from 
if they have edit access, you can't give them, they don't have permission to give editing to someone else. And you can even make it a little harder for someone to actually download the document. I'll bet you if they really wanted to, they could somehow find a way, if at least getting screenshots of your document, this just makes it a little harder to uh, download, print, or copy. So I click Done. Now that link to the Google Docs, let's just put it right here uh, underneath that line. If I hit Shift Enter, or is it Alt Enter? Shift Enter keeps it in the same numbered instruction, and I can Control V Paste that long link, and then hit a space bar. Google Docs automatically knows to make it a link. If you view that link, you will see that it looks just like I have I have opened it in Google Docs. And because you're the owner, you'll have edit privileges. But anyone else that viewed this, they would still see the ribbon across the top, but they wouldn't be able to make any edit changes. And another cool thing about it, when they are, are viewing it, you will see their little user icon showing that they're viewing your document together. So this is a great way to collaborate with people across the internet Say you're discussing something and you have plans, share it as a Google Doc. You can share it to specific people. You can always come back here and, and share it to specific people that can actually edit it. And while they're viewing it and editing, you can see the changes live. Working on a schedule, get sharing ideas, making comments about your wonderful professors, having a blog going. Whatever you want to do, you can share a document live with a group of people. Publish it to your blog and say on Thursday night we're going to discuss this topic. Here's the link and they can edit it. Very handy for discussion. So that's the part of the Google Docs. Now we're going to go on to even more exciting things in the cloud. We've shared it as a web page. We've shared it as a Google Doc. Now create a personal website. How do we do that? Well, remember back in the drive or in your email, you have that grid of apps. Back in your grid of apps, notice there is a sites item in your application grid. There's lots of other things that you are welcome to play with, such as Hangouts or Maps or Slides, Contacts. but we're going to just take a look at that sites. Click on sites and now I can come to a, a way to create a website in Google Docs. Now I'm not sure if you have a regular Google account. Spencer, is that showing up in your regular Google account sites? Does it have that? Okay, because I, I think in a generic, I don't know if generic E, uh, Gmails allows you to do sites. Okay, so to do the sites and the, what they would be, they would actually be a site underneath our Emmaus.edu in Google Docs. You can pick or click create. And actually, let's go ahead. Let's go to if you don't. I think you already may be at new Google Sites. I'm going to go to new Google Sites so it looks the same as yours. Now that I'm in new Google Sites. Uh, let's see here, I can, in my menu, I can, I was looking for it, oh there, the little, little plus at the lower right, that lets you create a site in the new Google Sites page. I click plus, and now I can choose a particular theme for a site, over here under themes, pick whatever theme you like, I don't have a lot of choices for themes. And don't worry about spending a lot of time on picking your theme. Just get a taste of how easy it is in Google in the cloud here to create your own personal site. There are lots of places where you can create sites. And let's see, I think in the instructions here, I may have given an instruction of what to name your site. Uh, create a personal website. Yeah, name it CS101-YourLastName. All right, so go back to that site. I'm going to call it CS101. And since I have many of them, I'm going to make mine SP2020 dash last name, Manning. And that shows up as my name. Whatever you want to put for your 
site title and just play around with it a little bit of the things we can do here. I don't think I asked you to do a ton but just a little experiment here with what you can do in Google Sites. How many of you actually have a, a site of your some content. You have a blog. Anyone have a blog or a site of any sort? You can, uh, if you're doing any kind of plans for interviewing for a future job, actually having a portfolio like this is something that more and more employers are expecting. It may be your Facebook page if you have, if you publish that, but I would recommend if you're doing anything uh, that you have some significant work you've done at school that might be something to discuss at an interview. When you're even filling out a resume, you could have established a little site that just kind of is, has an example of your work, the things you enjoy. Think of it as beyond your resume. Wouldn't hurt to even have a resume online. That would impress someone that is expecting some computer skills. If you said, oh yeah, here's my link to my resume, they would right away assume, oh, you've got computer skills. You know how to you know, build a website. More and more, that's going to be just something they expect. You could demonstrate uh, some of your work if you're in particular, uh, say you're going into theology, some of your papers you've done. They say, hey, here's, you want to interview, you want to know, get to know me a little better? Here's my site. Check, take a look at some work I've done, some videos of any presentations I've made. Be impressing a future employer. So on this site, very easy to make. I'm going to just insert a few things just to play with this. See how under the insert menu here, I can insert a, how about a text box? And it shows up there. And this, I'll just say, this is a test website for CS 101 Spring 2020. What other things can I put in here? I can uh, put in some table of contents. I can put in a button. Let's see what a button shows up. Test button. It can take me to a link. Let's put in the link to this document. So a button can show up like that. I can put in a divider, just a vert uh, horizontal line. I could put a map. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let's put, put the Dubuque. How about we put our address in here? 2570 Asbury Road. There we go. Dubuque, Iowa shows up. Look at that. I can show the location. You go ahead. You could put your home address and show your location. Lots of things you could do, forms, charts, lots of fun things that you could put on a web page. Now, I'm not so worried, concerned that you put a lot of stuff on your web page. As long as I can tell that was your web page, you're welcome to put things on there, humorous or not. Let's go now check what we want to do with that website. Has it been published yet? No, it's not published until I click the Publish button. And I think you'll get a little better looking website name. Let's see what it looks like if I click publish. I'm hoping it's not going to be a long ugly name. Oh, it's not too bad. It's going to show up as sites.google.com slash emmaus.edu slash cs101 sp that, and that's the name of the site I gave it. So sites emmaus my website name. And notice I can allow anyone at Emmaus Bible College to see it is the default. Let's change that. Let's click on manage. And let's make sure that anyone can view my site. Anyone can find and view the published version. There we go. Now, anyone on the internet can find that. I haven't given anyone else edit permissions to my website. Just like a Google Doc, I can give someone permission to, to view or change. And I can decide if they do edit, they can't give other people permission. And I'm going to click done and now publish if you're nervous about what you have and would not like to be listed on search engines you can request that it doesn't say they guarantee that they won't find it but since this is just innocent testing material I can click publish and now what was it five minutes I have a web page published on Google Docs and Let's see, if I visit this page, I, there's the link to it. Let's see what it would look like if I visit it as a website. I paste that link, 
copy paste that link there's the not so ugly but fairly long website URL and there's what my site would look like if I gave someone a link pretty cool huh? and not too hard to make a little embedded map a little button that I can t have take me to a link somewhere else now let's see if we have completed all the requirements for this particular assignment coming back to the document here we created the personal website put in our last name publish the website let's go ahead and put the link to it here I copy it and paste the link right here in my document now this is something that has changed over over time it used to be you could edit my settings on the page and actually allow people to add attachments let's just just see if I can do that now come back to here and let's see my my page settings how do you get to page settings I think up here site info settings oh look you can actually see how many times it's been visited you can actually have analytics start but I'm not seeing where I can change let's try the site info settings see what's there show page no that's not the attachment settings they may have made it different for the new sites and every time I come here let's look at publish settings so under publish publish settings nope there's nothing there about attachments and I think I may have mentioned that in the document that the old classic sites we had the opportunity to enable or disable people to add attachments to my website if they wanted to comment it and so new Google Drive versus classic site does behave slightly differently but I wanted you to view the the new site because that just feels like we're more up with the time by using the new sites so that last item in the assignment you don't need to change any settings because in under new sites that's not available but you do have some cool things that you can insert into your into your sites so I think that's as far as I'll have you go with the Google Cloud just to get a little taste documents published at websites actual reasonably good looking websites using Google Docs Here's a particular website that is actually out there. Let's see if it's, I can remember my address. awanadbq.edu or is it .com? I think it's .com. No, maybe it's .org. Let's try .org. I forgot our forgot my website name. There we go. Our Awana site is actually a Google site when we go to awanadbq.org, it takes you to our Google site, which is a lot easier for people to edit. Other places where you do websites, there's, they're usually friendly, but there's a whole other system to worry about. If I'm already comfortable using Google Docs, Google Sites is an easier thing to worry about than to have a whole other account somewhere on a website. But there's plenty of great places to have free websites. Uh, many provide very re if if not free very reasonable prices to provide to to publish any website so if you want to have your portfolio or you're even with a small organization that can't afford a lot to have a website it's not that hard to actually have a free uh, a free website WordPress is another very popular place where people have have free websites many people are blogging on their WordPress site so once you have this have that completed under Schoology, all you need to do in your submission for your assignment, and let's see if I can go find that example users, Mr. Smart. All you have to do when you submit it, let's see if I've made it clear here. There's some other documents I had. All you need to do, I think, is enter the links to this document. Since I have all the links inside my Google Doc, all I need to do is in the submission of this assignment underneath the create part here just do some, put something like this here is the link to my shared document actually there's three things there's a published document right 
as a web page. Link to shared document. And then link to uh, Google site. To my Google site. So three links. Maybe I'll make that clear. So three links you need to provide to me. And if they're in the document, then you're good. And I did that. In my document, I put them here. There's the link to the published. There's the link to the shared doc. And there's the link to my site. So I can just as well give a link to this document right here. Document as a web page. I can right click, copy the link, go back to Schoology and say three links. I'll say see this document. And I'll control V paste that. Or and then, and then even better, as I select through that, Schoology doesn't automatically make it a link, but I can select through that and click the chain and paste the URL so it actually becomes a link. Let me show you that again. I have the link to it by going over to here, and I can right-click, copy the link URL, come back to here. I can select some text or just paste the text of the entire ugly link select through it clicking and dragging click on the chain and make it a link now i have a link that takes me to that document that contains the other links to the shared as a document and to the google site if you'd like you can put the links to the site here as well but if as long as those other links are in this document i'm happy with that just so now you have a taste of working in the cloud. And then submit, and that will show up then as a submitted assignment. If you ever think you might have something wrong, you can always resubmit. Or I'll see, I don't know if it lets you edit that. Does it let you edit that? It looks like, no, that's showing what's there. I don't think it lets, well, I guess you can delete your submission. I, no, I don't. I don't know if that deletes a submission. I haven't ever messed with new draft. Probably easiest just to resubmit. If you think you did something wrong, just do a resubmit. I haven't pay, paid attention to this. I don't know if anyone's using Schoology portfolios, but apparently you you can have your own Schoology portfolio throughout the years. Perhaps to share that with. Uh, I don't know if I'm guessing it's shared publicly. I haven't messed with that. All right, so there you have it. The cloud assignment is now complete. If you've added the link there, then you're good. I think I'm going to stop my recording there.